Do you give up at the first sign of opposition? Do ya? One of the most common causes of failure is a habit of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich. If you have yet to read the book, I highly recommend it. It is a book that really shifted me and my perception, my life, many, many years back. Just picked it up again, and once again, I'm on the journey. I can never stop learning. So this book is a culmination of more than 500 of the most successful men in this country. And what they told Napoleon Hill, the author, was that their greatest successes came just one step beyond the point of which defeat had overtaken them. Just one step beyond that point, right? Beyond your breaking point, beyond when you go, oh, I just can't take it anymore. Just one step. More than 500 of the most successful men in this country. So what does that say? So with that, I really want to share with you a story. One of my favorite stories in this book is about uh, a man named Darby, the Darby family, actually, and who many years back went through the Colorado, uh, went to Colorado for the gold rush to find his fortune, right? He staked his claim, he bought a pick, he bought a shovel, and he went to work. Now, after many weeks of di digging, he struck gold. But when this started to happen, he decided, wow, I should go borrow some money with, from, from my friends and family and purchase the necessary machinery to really get the job done right. So, good step. He did so. And in doing so, he managed to get the first load of gold up and out and ready to pay off his family and friends, and so now he's ready for some profits, right? And then something happened. The vein of gold had disappeared. It was nowhere to be found. It ran out. They didn't know which way to go, right? They desperately kept drilling to find gold, hoping that they would find more gold. However, they did not. And what did they end up doing? They quit. I know. That's right. Quit. Quit has never been in my vocabulary. I don't like the word. But they did. They quit. Okay? So they sold the machinery back to the junk man for a few hundred dollars, and they went back home. Little did they know that the junk man had called an engineer to do a little calculating. The engineer discovered that the project had failed because the Darbys were not familiar with the fault lines, right? His calculation showed that the gold vein would be found just three feet away. Once again, he found that the vein of gold was to be found just three feet away, three feet away. So long story short is that he was three feet away from their gold when they gave up, right? And the junk man ended up taking millions of dollars of gold from the mine because he knew enough to ask for guidance, right? To for ask for advice before he gave up. So really moral of the story is don't give up. You know, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Maybe gain a new perspective. You've heard me speak about this before. Everything happens for a reason, and not everything's ma meant to be. I do agree. Sometimes we have to take a step back. Sometimes it's, you know, we, it's not more about quitting if you've tried 100%. It's about saying, hey, maybe this is not meant to be. But you've got to be willing to give 100%. As I've said before, I've always been a risk taker. I've done everything 100% and I have fallen down many times. Yet when and each and every time I do, I get back up and I'm stronger for it. Does it stop me from going for it? No. Do I quit? No. I learn something new about myself each and every time. So really, this is a great thing we can learn, I believe, once again from our children, right? Children are so persistent, are they not? Have you ever noticed that when a child wants something, they are relentless? If dad says no, then they're going to go ask mom, right? Did you do that? Do you remember that? If dad says no, you go ask mom. You're persistent, right? Children keep at it, even when the going gets tough. How do they do this? Is it their desire, determination, strong willpower, perhaps? I believe it's all of this, but really, what keeps them going? The main word, persistence, period persistence. So what is persistence and how can we attain it? Many of us understand it. I'm sure many of us have been in situations where we've had to be, you know, and persevere. Yet some of us give up too easy when it is not easy. And I believe persistence is a state of mind, right? Therefore, you can cultivate it. But if you really want something, you got to be willing to go above and beyond the call of duty, above and beyond your first initial defeat, even if you have a defeat. So you can't take no for an answer, right? 
you got to have a burning desire inside of you, right? What are your thoughts focused on? It really comes, once again, to our thoughts, our mind. Because once we make up our mind and we really truly believe we can achieve what we're going for and this is what we want, we can have it. But there's no room for doubt. And that's the kicker. Many of us doubt. That's natural. I'm not saying you're not going to at, at, at some time or another. But if you can truly make up your mind and say, this is it, I'm moving forward, this is going to happen, most of the time, if it's meant to be, it will. Why? Because you're driven, you're focused, you are persistent, you are continuous and putting your effort forth, right? And there's no room for doubt, meaning you're not going there. You are not going there. Example, the economy right now, it is not going well. We can't negate that. We can't be in denial, and I'm not saying we should be. And we shouldn't be naive. However, do I live my life right now thinking, oh my God, the economy, what am I going to do? No, I don't want to have that in my mindset on a daily basis. So I am continuing to put projects forth no matter what is happening right now and existing out there in the current reality. Because my reality is, hey, it's a new day. Just like anything else, nothing's changed and I can't achieve this. So I guess that's really the best way to describe it is, is it really means to have faith when adversity is knocking at your door. And the belief that defeat is temporary, because it is, right? If everything happens for a reason, once again, then we are learning. So how can we really be a failure? Once again, I think it comes down to just know that you've given 100%. If you can't say you've given 100%, uh, that must feel pretty bad. And you're going to question some of your motives, some of what you did and did not do. But if you know that you've given 100% and you've tried and tried again, then when you let go and move forward, it's because it's meant to be. It's not because you quit. It's not because you didn't give 100%. So I believe that's the most important thing for me is all along as I know that I've tried and tried again, I stepped back, I've seen other avenues and I'm moving forward, it's the best I can do. If you give your best, you will not falter. You will not falter. So once again, those of us who are considered the most successful have fallen many times. The only difference is we get back up and we do it again, right? So when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's it. So be persistent in your endeavors. Remember the squeaky mouse gets the cheese. Rise above adversity and don't quit. Never give up. The sky's the limit. This is your life. See it. Believe it. Taste it. Dream it. Do it.